Many lane miles of bituminous pavements can be found throughout the country. Bituminous pavements have many advantages, but one problem area tends to occur along the longitudinal joints. The Illinois Department of Transportation, along with Hendy Products and Heritage Research, have looked into the potential of joint sealant to address this issue. The premature deterioration of longitudinal joints is often a problem with bituminous pavements. Factors that may attribute to the joint deterioration are 1. An unconfined edge that occurs with the compaction of the first lane. The pressure of the roller causes the unconfined material to move outward causing low edge density. 2. A cold joint occurs between lanes placed at different times. Despite the hot temperatures of the second lane placed, the material at the edges never fully melts together. 3. Bridging may occur at the joint if the roller is too far over on the previously placed mat or not enough material is placed at the joint to allow for compaction. When this happens, the roller may have little to no contact with the mat at the joint area as overemphasized by the air gap. The low compaction can continue for several inches beyond the joint itself. The three factors may produce low density and thus high permeability at the joint. High permeability allows for the infiltration of water and air which can produce stripping, cracking, and raveling. A field permeameter was utilized to determine how much permeability is at the joints and the decrease in permeability that was produced by using a joint sealant. The device was fabricated by the Illinois Department of Transportation based on an early NCAT prototype. The permeameter is a falling head device. IDOT's procedure is that water is added and the fall in the water line is time for a set height drop. Three consecutive readings are averaged to produce a result. The three different standpipes give the device flexibility to measure various permeability amounts. To prevent water loss at the pavement interface, silicon is applied to a neoprene ring. The ring is then placed over the test site and pressure is applied to ensure proper seating. The standpipe is placed on the neoprene ring so that it is aligned with the opening in the neoprene ring. Two 10 pound weights are then added to prevent water from flowing between the neoprene base and the standpipe. Water is added and the time the water drops a predetermined level is recorded. Low permeability readings are taken in the top tier. Proper compaction can lead to a pavement with very little permeability as shown. The permeability of joints are typically measured using the middle or bottom tier. The drop in water height when measuring permeability at the joints is typically very quick even when using the bottom tier. Joint permeability is typically much greater than the mainline permeability. In this example, the joint permeability was around 6,000 times 10 to the negative 5 centimeters per second. Desired permeability values are in the 100 times 10 to the negative 5 centimeter per second range. The mainline permeability on the same project is below the 100 times 10 to the negative 5 centimeters per second range. A large difference can be seen between joint and mainline permeability. The concept behind the joint sealant material is that it is placed prior to paving and allows for vehicles to pass over the material. When the hot mix asphalt is placed over the joint sealant, it melts and migrates upward into the voids with compactive effort. The two products that were evaluated are the Hendy Quick Seam and the Heritage Research J-Band. Both products are applied at an 18 inch width to account for the high permeability at the joint as well as the entire joint area. The quick seam is placed in two 9 inch strips. The first strip extends beyond the edge of the first pass. The second strip is overlapped with the first strip and may even be placed on the edge of the previously placed mat. The J band is placed in one 18 inch strip centered at the center line. An added benefit of the joint sealant is its ability to prevent the unconfined edge from pushing out. On one of the early trials, the potential of leaving the plastic backing on the joint sealant allowing the plastic to melt was evaluated. 
The backing did not melt as intended. However, it was observed that the joint sealant with no backing, located at the topmost sample, helped prevent the mat from moving. The handy quick seam comes in rolls that are placed by unrolling the material at the joint. Initially, the top and bottom backing were left in place. The bottom backing is then removed to hold the material in place. The top backing is left on until shortly before paving over the material to prevent tracking and or tearing that may occur under traffic. The quick seam is paved over with care taken to allow a couple of inches of overhang to allow for the overlap of the second strip. Here is the quick seam after the first lane has been paved. The second strip is applied. The materials overlap with the first strip and is shown being lapped up onto the edge of the existing lane. The matching lane is then placed. Cores taken from the joints were taken to the lab and broken open to examine the amount of migration that occurred. The joint sealant makes it difficult to split the cores open. The material is then examined in the core. The elasticity of the material is demonstrated. The migration of the joint sealant is observed and marked on the cores. With time, the joint sealant becomes difficult to detect, so marking the migration is necessary if later observations are to be made. The quick seam is approximately three quarters of an inch from the top of the core. The surface lift is approximately one and a half inches thick, which means the initial 3 16 inch of material placed has migrated up to produce approximately three quarters of an inch area of joint sealant. The Heritage Research J-Band is applied as a fluid. The striking plank can be adjusted to various thicknesses. In this trial, a kettle was used to heat the material. Shortly after placement, traffic may pass over the material with little to no effect. Even when the pickup truck is allowed to sit on the material, very little deformation occurs. Half of the J-band is paved over during the placement of the first lane. The remaining J-band is covered with the placement of the second lane. The J-band material migrated to approximately a half inch from the top of the core. The initial 3 16 of an inch thick material has migrated to approximately one and a quarter inch area of sealant. Various formulations were evaluated to get to the current formulations and migration levels. The quick seam was evaluated on Illinois 10 and 121 in Lincoln and on Route 40 near the Indiana border in District 5. The J-band was evaluated when used on a retention pond in Indiana and in a subdivision. Both products were then evaluated on US 51 south of Decatur. Past trials have focused on evaluating different formulations in small test sections that have ranged from 3 feet in length to over 100 feet in length. Satisfied with the formulation migration, larger scale constructability will be evaluated. In 2003, joint sealant will be used in approximately a 4 mile stretch on Illinois 26 in District 2. A 1 mile control section will help evaluate the benefit of joint sealant. Each product, the Handy Quick Seam and the Heritage Research J-Band, will be placed in a 1 mile section. The remaining portion of the project, which is approximately 2 miles, will contain one of the two joint sealant products of the contractor's choice. Unconfined edges, cold joints, and bridging can produce a permeable pavement that can lead to premature deterioration. A joint sealant can be used to fill the voids at the joint and in the joint area. Filling the voids can help to prevent water and air infiltration, which helps to prevent distresses such as cracking, raveling, and stripping. As an additional benefit, the high polymer content of the joint sealant may help prevent reflective cracking.